Hello, everyone, and welcome to Season 2, Episode 5 of the Trivia 10. Today, we have our first familiar face back from Season 1, K Meeks. How are you doing today? I'm doing all right. I'm excited to be back. Yeah, ready for some redemption. Obviously, you ended last season second in the regular season, made it to the playoffs, and were not able to get the championship. That obviously your podcast co-host, mate, Doug Holler, was able to get the championship. You're back in Season 2, ready to try and make the playoff push here. Yeah, But, of course... Absolutely. Yeah, we'll see. We have new episodes every Tuesday and Friday. Make sure you're subscribed. This season, 16 people are going to be making the playoffs, so only four people out of the 20 in the regular season aren't going to be making it. So you got Ethan right now in last place with 50, but we have a long way to go in this season. But if you're able to top Harry with 115, which was a, a crazy score that honestly I'm going to be surprised if anyone tops. But if you're able to beat that, then you're already locked in playoff position because they have four under you. But I think this quiz this season is tougher. It's harder. I'd be surprised if anyone gets over 100. I was very surprised by Harry's score. But we'll see how you do. I mean, you're a trivia veteran at this point. You've been on two different episodes. So let's go ahead and dive right in. You know how this goes. We're going to do multiple choice, then general trivia, and then some mashing games and some other fun stuff. But question one, of course, multiple choice. Which of these films was not nominated for Best Picture? Which of these PTA films was not nominated for Best Picture? Licorice Pizza, Boogie Nights, Phantom Thread, or There Will Be Blood? So three of these have been nominated for Best Picture. Which one of these have not? Okay. I am going to immediately cross off There Will Be Blood. I am almost certain that one had to be nominated for Best Picture. Uh, I'm like torn about Boogie Nights because I think I feel like Licorice Pizza was that year where the nominees weren't that great and maybe it was nominated. And I want to say Phantom Thread was nominated because uh, Daniel Day-Lewis was probably nominated. They probably picked up a few. It feels weird to say that Boogie Nights wasn't nominated, but I'm going to guess Boogie Nights. Boogie Nights is correct. We've seen it time okay. and time again on the Trivia 10 that sticking with your gut is usually the right play. And Boogie Nights is kind of jumping out at you from the get-go saying that, that probably wasn't nominated for Best Picture. He did get a screenplay nom, but nope, the other three were Best Picture nominations. Boogie Nights was not. Five points or one for one so far, heading into the next multiple choice. How many films directed by Noah Baumbach star Greta Gerwig? Three, four, five, or six. So this one you might want to just talk me through your thought process and start crossing off movies you know no bomb back has that Greta Gerwig is in. Yeah. Um man, that's tricky because no offense to Noah Bombach, not not the the guy I'm most interested in. I have I do like Frances Ha, and I know she's in that. And I know she was in uh I can't remember the name, but that movie that came out last year. Um, white noise, white noise. Mm -hmm. So that's at least two, but two is not an option. So I know <laughs> it has to be more than that. Um, I, this might just have to be a vibes guess. Might just have to look at a number and call it. So I'll go. Man, he doesn't he doesn't have that many movies though. But I, I also feel like she would be in most of them. I I'm gonna go with five. The vibes were not it. Oh. It was four. So she was in Greenberg was... first. And that's with Jennifer Jason Lee. That's kind of the, the marriage story-esque movie where it's featuring both his past and current right, wife. Right. And then Francis Ha. I think Mistress America is the one most people forget about because White Noise obviously is so recent. Francis Ha probably the most known of the four. But four was the correct answer. Um, people, no can't points see in my head. people can't see in my head, but I was I was holding on to four till the last second. And then I was like, that seems too low. And yeah. I should have went with it. I mean, just going back to like the school days, I feel like multiple choice, like A and D are kind of normally right. can be ruled out in situations like this. But yeah, you were 50 50, did not get this one. But five points were for the multiple choice ones. Those are small chickens, 150 total points in this quiz is available. Now we're going on to the general trivia question quiz. Question number three In past lives, how many layers of Inyun is needed for two people to be destined to marry and live happily forever? Man. Um, Wow, what a question, because I should know this for a movie that I really adored. But I, I, I'm i so bad at these, like, specific numbers in a movie. You know what I mean? Like, when you have mm -hmm. to guess, like, a specific number of things in a movie, I just, those are details that just completely go over my head when I'm watching something. Mm -hmm. um, for some reason, I have two numbers in my head, and they are far apart from each other. One of them is is three, and one of them is eight. But I also feel like it could be, like, some crazy high number, and I'm just way off um wow okay i three three feels low but eight feels random uh i'm gonna 
I'm just going to go with eight. Why not? I'm, I'm kind of lost on this one anyway. We'll go eight. I do think this is a tough question. And the answer is 8,000 layers. Oh, 8, so I was like layers. on the right track. I was yeah, like, you had I it had, in your mind. I was like, eight is a random number, but for some reason it's in my head. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is a tough one. It's like, obviously you just either know it or you don't. But um, one of the more, you know, better scenes of the movie. I mean, I really like the movie as a whole, but that right. scene, you know, where she's kind of explaining it. Going on to question number four. What city does Bella move to at the beginning of Twilight? Oh, uh, Forks. We're back on the winning side of history. Oh, yeah. We got Come 10 on. points there from Forks. Forks, Washington. She moves from Arizona up to Dream Forks. travel destination for me, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that. I mean, because Twilight's a five star for you. So this would be, oh, yeah. you know, high on your list of tourist destinations to check out. Um, yeah, it definitely would be more interesting than checking out her original town, Arizona. I can tell you there's there's not a whole <laughs> lot here to see. Um, going on to question number five, though, you're at 15 points so far. In seven, what does Somerset keep on at night to help him sleep? Somerset is Morgan Freeman's character, detective. What does he keep on at night to help him sleep? I feel like like saying like a light would be too obvious. I mm, man, it's I really don't have a good memory of seven, but I, I remember I remember like this conversation happening in the movie, but I oh okay. Let me let me think of things that you can keep on. It's, yeah, I mean, it's either a light or a or a TV or probably neither of those things because those are way too obvious, huh? Um, I'm just gonna go with a TV. That's wrong, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a tricky one. It's a small detail. It's a metronome. Metronome, a metronome on oh. at night to help him sleep. I will say, just making the quiz as the quiz maker. Question three and question five, the two that you missed, I do think are definitely harder questions overall. So. I wouldn't be too beat up about missing those. He's got a lot, of, a lot of other opportunities left to be able to grab points here. But now we're moving on to where we're kind of getting new in this season with the more fun type of games. So we got the matching game box office edition here. So you know how it goes. We're going to show you three movies and then three stats about their budget and how much they made worldwide. And you have to tell me which one is which. So we got Boyhood, The Perks of Being a Wallflower, and Wind River. And we got a production budget of $11 million that made $45 million, a budget of $4 million that made $57 million, and a budget of $13 million that made $33 million. Wow. Okay. Um, I don't know what my thought process is here. I I mean, all these movies were very cheap relative to most movies that get made. Um, I mean, I know Boyhood was made over a long period of time. Was it expensive, though? Probably not. Um, Four million seems low, though, for any of these movies. I feel like Wind River can't be four million because there's a little too much going on that could be man uh okay box offices 45 57 33 i'm gonna guess that wind river made the least out of these probably um because i don't really hear people talk about it although i do think it's a decent movie um perks of being a wallflower might have made the most but boyhood was a best picture nominee i want to say so people kind of some people just you know, watch Best Picture nominees. There's like a little, there's like a, a at least a bar there for how much they'll make. Um, would Perks of Being a Wallflower only cost four million to make, though? Uh, maybe, maybe. I I think I'll. Do I just do I just go one two three across the board here? Um, that seems like something you'd do. I'm I, I might be wrong. I'm gonna go one two three just straight across. One, two, three. None of them are actually correct in this one. So surprisingly, the lowest budget here is Boyhood. I would love to see what the accounting sheet looks like for that for 12 years, how you spend $4 million. Like, How was that money divvied up throughout over a decade of production? And then we had the most money being made from Wind River. And then uh, Perks of Being a Wallflower only made $33 million, which is kind of surprising because I feel like at this point, it's definitely cemented itself in like a cult classic territory that a lot of people love as a coming of age story. But when it just came out, didn't make that much, which is also surprising because the book I thought was pretty popular as well. But unfortunately, none of the matching game was right on that one. But we got another matching game to get us more points here. And this is going to be the Rotten Tomatoes edition. So we got Les Miserables, Cha Cha Real Smooth, and On the Count of Three for 70 critics, 79 audience, 85 critics, 61 audience, and 84 critics, 81 audience. Oh, I feel like I'm going to, I feel like we're going to walk away with very few points today, Tyler. I feel, 
I feel like this is going to be a, an all-time low performance looking at I mean, you, you saw the leaderboard right before now. we got in. Other than Harry, I mean, scores this season are on That's average true. way lower than last season. Like the the That's numbers true. don't really go one to one. It's way different types of quizzes here. Um oh man, I don't once again, don't know what my thought process is here exactly. I don't I haven't seen Les Mis, so I but but I I feel like maybe it's a it's a bit lower critically which I, I that might be that might be number one and then i guess on the count of three would be number two because i wouldn't be surprised if that audience score was somewhat lower than critics maybe like divisive ending to a movie maybe like the average moviegoer was not a, a fan of of how that whole thing plays out it's quite dark um so that feels I don't I don't know. I don't know. Because I don't know if the average person would really like Cha Cha Real Smooth either. Um and I'm not even really sure that Lay Miz is number one. Uh because maybe critics just love that movie. Um I'm gonna stick with my gut though. I will go Lay Miz number one. Cha Cha Real Smooth number three and on the count of three number two. If I get all three of these wrong, then I'm in a bad spot. <laughs> no, you got one right. You got Lay Miz okay. right. You stuck with your gut, and then you got flipped between Ooh. your Cha Cha Real Smooth and on the count of three. And you did, you've been, this is your third time with me for trivia, and you did get inside my head. You knew one, two, three would be something that I would do. You just were one matching game two. Yeah. Early, the one, two, three came here. Um, but yeah, Lay Miz was kind of just, you know, a good movie in terms of critics and audience, whereas it was a little more divisive for uh cha-cha real smooth on the audience side which but like you said cha-cha real smooth on the count of three i wouldn't be surprised either one being two or three just because they both have vibes that i could see audiences being very mixed on but yeah. you got five points there you're at 20 now with three questions left you still have an opportunity though with 80 points left on the board so this is far from over from eight nine and ten so question number eight there's gonna be two correct answers for this one 10 points for each one you're gonna get right so in Do the Right Thing, whose two pictures is Smiley carrying with him in his pocket at all times? The Malcolm X and MLK. Look at that. 20 points is huge. Oh. You're up to 40 now, and that's that, you needed that one, and you got yeah. it without even a hesitation there. And Do the Right Thing question. I mean, that's that's my bread and butter right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, th I think some of these questions were, were super tough, but do the right thing. You, you got perfect 20. I think this is one that you're either getting zero or 20. I feel like if your mind goes yeah. to remembering what it is, you're going to get both of them there. But great work. You're at 40 now. Let's build on this momentum and to ride the bus because we're going to give you a uh, letterbox average score, and that movie is going to be Lady Bird at a 3.9. And You have yeah. to tell me if there's the next one higher or lower on average score. And we'll see how far you can make it. First movie. Jojo Rabbit, is it above or below a 3.9 on Letterboxd? Wow, what a great choice. Um, because I famously do not love this movie too much. And, uh, and I, I know a number of people who also don't. However, I think you give it a 1.5, correct? Yes. How, maybe even lower. I'm not really sure what my, my rating is off the top of my head. But I know a whole lot of people like this movie. I know it was a Best Picture nominee. I have met several people in my life who like like regular everyday people who are obsessed with this movie and call it one of their favorites. So I would not be surprised if the letterbox rating is quite high on this. But is it a 4.0? I'm I'm wondering if the people like myself bring the curve down enough to, to get below a 4.0. But oh man. I really don't want to. What's your gut really saying? What's your gut yeah, saying? Yeah, I know. I really don't want to choke this one because I know I need these points. Oh, okay. Let's go higher. I don't like that. <laughs> You're still on the right. bus. It's okay. a 4.0. There's a there's definitely a loud vocal minority that really dislikes this movie, but like you said, not not strong enough to drag down that average rating because there's that, so many that people who love the movie. <laughs> yeah, that, that's one I could tell. Like every fiber Ooh. in your body was saying, like it has to be lower than Lady Bird. That simply makes sense. Yeah. But there's something telling you that you know it, it's a gotcha. So far in this one, I've had some tricky first ones to get on the bus. But now we're gonna keep riding and see how you do. Next movie, Nomad Land. Is it above or below a 4.0 on Letterboxd? Like another Best Picture nominee. I wouldn't be surprised if it was rated high, but I feel like there's too many. The problem is that not a lot of people have seen this movie. So I was going to say there's too many like regular 
kind of, you know, not huge movie people on Letterboxd who probably watched this movie and were not fans. But how many people watch this movie at all? I, I'm just going to go lower. I feel like there's no way Nomadland has a 4.0. I'd be, I mean, that'd be surprising, but. Mm -hmm. Lower is correct, and you also gave us some insight into some interesting strategy because Jojo Rabbit, for example, like I don't know the log numbers, I don't have them in front of me, but I'd imagine Jojo Rabbit popular, yeah. is infinitely logged more than Nomadland, so that's interesting because we normally see you know, more popular movies get the push to be a little higher rated on Letterboxd. So 10 point, you, you needed these points and you're getting them so far. We'll see how far you can keep going. Next, we have Francis Ha, above or below a 3.8. Okay. I would... <laughs> The thing about Francis Ha is that I would be totally unsurprised if it had a 3.6. I would also be totally unsurprised if it had like a 4.0. My guess is that a majority of people like this movie. We already talked about it earlier as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I I think a lot of people like this movie. Um, my guess is like a rating would be like a 3.9. So I'll go higher. I think it has a 3.9. You did not guess the rating right, but it is above. Oh, it is a okay. 4.0, okay. so you're good. Okay. You're still alive. Again, you are. Th this back half of the quiz has been magical for your score here, and you're on to the last one to see if you can make it all the way to the end. Coda, another Best Picture, not only nominee, but winner. Is it above or below a 4.0 on Letterboxd? This, this one might be the 3.9, actually, but I don't know because because – Coda's a Coda's a crowd pleaser. I know you. I, I don't. I think you're a fan of Coda, right? Uh, yeah, I love Coda. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'm also. I'm also a fan. I know that's like a little bit. Wow. Controversial, I'm surprised. I thought like nobody was. Yeah. Like, no. Nobody's... I know it's. I know it's a little bit controversial, but I. I think it's a harmless movie. I think there are like more offensive movies. The worst thing that could have happened to it was it winning Best Picture because now it forever has to be associated mm -hmm. with an award that it probably didn't deserve. But like, but it's a very sweet movie, and and mm -hmm. it makes me feel good. I I enjoy it. Um. I yeah, my problem is that that best picture thing. People people got pretty mad about this movie, so it might it might have dragged it down a little bit. Uh, you know, I made it pretty far on the bus. I'm I'm just gonna go with my gut. Also, I'm I'm gonna guess it's like a three point nine. I'll go lower. Right on the nose, three point nice. nine. Rode the bus all the way to the end to get twenty. You're at sixty points now, which means you're already not going to be in last place entering the final question here. But you have an opportunity with this final question to to bump up even further on the leaderboard. But yeah, I agree. Coda is a movie I was pulling for at the Oscars just because I loved it so much. But then I, in hindsight, I almost wish, like you said, it didn't win Best Picture because now it just... Right. If it never won Best Picture, nobody would have ended up watching it. But now everyone did because it won Best Picture and people hate on it. But anytime I start to think it might be overrated, I just see Troy Kotzer's face again. I'm like, nah, I love that movie, man. I'm never going to yeah, hate I mean, movie. he's lovely in it. He's great. Mm -hmm. All right, going on to question 10, the final question of the quiz. We got guests the cast to really see, you know, where you're going to end on this leaderboard it can bump you way up or you know can get you you know you're still not going to be in last no matter what here but the first cast member we're going to be revealing is emma stone oh so. okay so we've got a lot of options here yep. um the obvious ones that come to mind are like your la la lands maybe you would even throw poor things on here maybe i here's my thing here's my thing i i wouldn't be surprised if you threw a zombie land at me because you have seen my letterbox and you know it's out of five stars the problem is i know you like to trick people on these and and once the second person pops up on on the zombie land cast i would know it and i feel like that maybe that's too easy you know what i mean because like regardless of if it's woody harrelson or jesse eisenberg i i would i would know immediately that it's zombie land so I don't know if you would go that route. Um, but I, she's in a lot of movies I like. I mean, Emma Stone's one of my favorite. You could also go Super Bad here, which is another one of my five star movies. Um, or you could go away from my five stars. Um, I'm kind of between. Maybe you would do the favorite. Gosh, there are so many options. I mean, what a mm -hmm. career for somebody in their 30s. Uh, okay. I don't I don't want to try too hard to get in your head because I you could have gone any of those routes I just mentioned. So I'm just gonna throw out would you do the favorite? I don't know. Zombieland feels like like just like a like one you would put in there. I'm I'll, I'm gonna go Zombieland. I don't know. That's Zombieland is incorrect. Yeah. 
Okay. And that means five episodes in a season two. Still, no one's been able to get a, a perfect. When we saw season one, left and right, people were getting perfect. So, pride myself a little bit on that. But next cast member is going to be Dave Franco. Dave Franco is a soccer player and super bad. I'm going to go super bad. There you go. Super bad's correct. Nice. The, the next ones I think would have for sure given it away with Seth Rogen and Jonah Hill. But Dave Franco's one when I was like looking up guess the cast ones, I was like, I've seen Super Bad a ton of times. I was like, was he in yeah. Super Bad? I totally forgot. I've, about I've watched that movie way too many times. I remember yeah. that. That soccer scene is also one of my favorites. It's very funny. <laughs> well, you got 90 points on the trivia today. So you were barreling towards bottom of the leaderboard and you're ending up here in second place at this point. So back in second, really, just really like last season. Around. <laughs> yeah. The ride, the bus was clutch. The, the do the right thing. Two pointer was cl- or getting both those right. was clutch as well. But yeah, that ride the bus, man, that, that was huge for you to get back in this position. Guess the cast with 30. Like you said, super bad's a, a five-star movie for you, but I'm not just going for favorites this season. Like you saw with seven, not one of your favorite right. movies. I think you have it a three and a half, but I'm, I'm pulling from everywhere. Cause I feel like season one, it made things too obvious. Like, okay, well, he's only looking at my five stars. Like Les Miz was on there, saw it on your watch list, but it wasn't really a quiz question. It was more like how well it's received. So we're expanding beyond the favorites, but now I'm hoping that I picked a movie that was your favorite for the guests to cast. Future contestants are just going to be even more in their head about what I possibly would pull from. Right. You got to go in all the directions. Mm-hmm. Got to go everywhere. I'm still very happy that no one's gotten it on the first cast member yet this season yeah. it just happened way too many times last i mean season. listen this was th- this whole quiz entirely because because i know a lot of people complain my first time around on the <laughs> show about about my quiz being too easy this is this is a real step up in terms of the quality of quite mm-hmm. i mean a lot of hard questions in all the episodes i've seen so far so mm-hmm. yep i think i think you got a tough quiz but you came out on the other side at 90 points in second place right now which means you only need one person left throughout the next I don't know, 15 episodes to get lower than you and you're in the playoffs. So you're sitting pretty nice right now, but thank you so for much March, for man. Watching, watching March Madness, and now I'm going to be in the Sweet 16, hopefully. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. I imagine we'll end up seeing you in the Sweet 16 for sure. But thank you for joining for the third time on the on this Trivia 10 series so far. New episodes are going to be every Tuesday and Friday as we keep going through Season 2 and head towards that Sweet 16 like Kay Meeks was talking about. With that, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Check out the Looks Like a Movie podcast and all Kay Meeks links in the description down below. We will see you in the next episode. Peace.